Are you ever shopping on Amazon and you end up on a brand's brand store and it just looks beautiful? And you're like, I wish my store looked like that. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by all the options and you're not sure where to start or what the specs are, what the dimensions are, that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna show you all of the Amazon brand store content blocks, the dimensions, the specs, the character counts, what you need to know, and even my recommendations and some examples for each. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Manoli. I've been helping Amazon brands grow their sales for the last five years, and let's jump right into the video. All right, guys, so there are 13 different content block options when you're creating your Amazon brand store. You can see them all right here on the right, and we're gonna jump into what they all mean and sort of what they look like. So starting with the split section, this one is probably the most unique out of all of them. Uh, there are two options. There's the variable height section layout and there's the basic section layout. So for the variable height section layout, you have three basic content options. You can show your product, which you just add your ASIN and it automatically connects a product. You can add an image or you can add text, very basic. For basic section layouts, you have a lot more options for content. You can show your product, image, image with text. You can do a shoppable image. You can show text. You can add a video and you can also add a background video which auto plays and loops forever. All right guys, so here you can see all of the split section layout options that you have for desktop and mobile. As you can see the variable height section layout which allows you to do, as we said, product, image, and text you know, much more limited. You're also limited in the style, right? So these would be your desktop options. And then this enclosed box would also be your, you know, the, the same option on mobile, what it would look like on mobile. So this side by side skinny image would be a stack and, and so on. And then for the basic section layout, which has a, a ton of more options, also has a lot more layout options and you can choose between all of these and they have a mobile optimized version as well. When we are adding images to our brand store, there's a couple of specs that we wanna know in terms of dimensions. So if it's a full width square, we wanna make sure that's 3000 pixels wide, which also means 3000 pixels tall, 300 PPI resolution. If we are using a full width rectangle, once again, we want to make sure that's 3,000 pixels wide and, you know, the height is actually variable. So you can do, you know, anywhere from 500 pixels tall to 3,000 pixels tall would work for that rectangle. If we're creating a half width rectangle from the variable section layout, that's going to be 2,050 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels tall. And that's going to look exactly like this here. So these category images on this brand store. These are 2,050 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels tall, and that's gonna fit perfectly. For your product module, there's gonna be two options, product details and product editorial. So product details is really easy. I like this one. You just add your ASIN, and all the info will populate automatically. So that's what is showing here in the top right. Your image is gonna populate automatically, your title, your reviews, your price, your bullet points, and an add to cart button. Your product editorial allows you to add a title and a description, two lines for the title and three lines for the description. We don't know what exactly the character count is, but if you go over, it'll, it'll call it out in red that you've gone over. And it looks something like this. It'll have your title, your description, and a price. So those are your options for the product module. We already talked about images, but here's an example of what that image module might look like. This would be a full width rectangle as we were talking about before. If it's full width, you want your images to be 3000 pixels wide, and then you have variability on the height. Your image with text has some specs. So we wanna make sure uh, if it's full width that we're using 3000 pixels wide, you know, if you're showing a smaller image here, um, just based on the layout type that you choose. It can be a bit smaller, but I would even still recommend that if you're using a square image, just make it 3000 by 3000 pixels. And then you have a headline, a body text, and then you have display options. So once again, two lines for the headline, three lines for the body text, 
and you can either choose inline or overlay. So this would obviously be the inline and this would be the overlay. And so, you know, if you're designing your image, this is going to be, you know, something to take into account that there might be a text box over that. Your overlay mode has uh, actually customizable features. So you can change the text size, the text alignment, so left aligned, center aligned, right aligned. You can change the position on the image. So in this case, we have in the top left, but you can put it into different corners uh, of the image. The text box color and opacity. So right now we have a white text box with black text. That could also be a black text box with white text. Um, and you can make the background transparent as well. We can also change the padding and then we can also change the distance from the edge of the screen. So right here you can see a thin margin. You can actually move it closer to the edge or further away from the edge. Now we have our shoppable image. This image actually does not have a desktop and mobile option. It's just one singular option. And the dimensions for that image is going to be 4,182 pixels wide by 2,037 pixels tall at 300 PPI resolution. Once you upload that image, you can actually tag up to six different products on the image. Uh, on this image, you can see these dots on each product. It's subtle, but they're there, as you can see. And this is a screenshot of me hovering over, over this uh, product here. And you can see that it's reflecting the product in the image. This is really cool. You could even have all your Im products you know, on the floor, or on a countertop, or in a studio background, or it could be people holding the product and you can tag it there. So there's a lot of creativity that you can incorporate with the shoppable image. We also have the straight up text module. No image, just text. I don't really like this because you don't get to customize the font, which is key to your brand identity. But if you wanna build a quick brand store, it's not a bad option. So um, you're allowed to have up to 20 lines of text. Again, they're not specific on the character count. You just kind of have to paste your text in there, start typing and see what ends up being 20 lines. Um, your text is not allowed to be all caps. No part of it is allowed to be all caps. You can't do random casing. So, you know, this example here shows you a lowercase r and then a random capital C. They want this to be proper sentence structure. And then obviously you can't do camel casing either. So random uppercase and lowercase letters throughout. And then your text options is you can choose all caps as an option. So you can't actually type in all caps, but you can choose to turn your module into all caps and you can choose to turn your module into all bold. So you're not allowed to highlight in bold certain parts, but the entire text module can become all bold all caps or both. And this is an example of what a text block might look like. We also have our video content block. So the interesting thing about the video content block is that it can be a full width video on your store, but you can also incorporate it into a split section. So in this case, we're talking about our co-founder with an image. And then to the right of that, we have a square content block with our co-founder. So this block actually doesn't have to be a square if you don't want it. It will just generate a thumbnail that shows it as a square, but the video itself could be vertical or horizontal. Um, what aspect ratio does this video need to be? Amazon says 1280 by 640 minimum. We recommend using standard 1080p aspect ratio. You know, we want to maximize our quality, obviously, for these. The file size does have to be less than 100 megabytes. So you can use a video compressor app if your video is over. Um, shouldn't be too complicated to get it under 100 megabytes. These are your file types that are compatible. I would just use MP4 or MOV. And your thumbnail image can be 3000 pixels wide by 1680 pixels tall at 300 PPI. So let's actually see this content block in action on Amazon. So as you can see, this is what we were talking about. We have this square video here, but look what happens when I click play. Welcome to For One Less. Today we're talking about changing. So it opens up as our standard horizontal video, the way we shot it. 
we're totally cool with that. We like that. But if you wanted to make this a 1080 by 1080 or a 1920 by 1920 square video, you could also do that. We also have our background video content block. Now this is a little bit different. So the background video is unique because it starts to autoplay without the customer having to click the play button and there's no audio. So this is more of a dynamic adding motion to your store. But once again, there's no audio, it auto plays. And while your video can be as long as you want, as long as it's under 100 megabytes, this has to be between two and 20 seconds. Once again, it's the same thing here, 1280 by 640 minimum aspect ratio. We recommend using standard 1080p, so 1080 pixels tall and you know usually 1920 pixels wide, but there's variability on that. As you can see here, this example is using a square. So if we come back to Amazon, we can see this background video loop in action. We're talking about our bestseller, and we also have a background video just to add a little bit of motion, make it a little bit more dynamic. We also have our product grid as a content block option. There are three ways that you can add products to this grid. You can automatically generate it using keywords. You can manually add the products by searching ASINs and clicking add, or manually by entering a list. So you would maybe paste in 30 ASINs with commas in between, and you could have up to 500 of those and it would automatically produce this sort of a content uh, layout as we can see on the right. Um, for both manual grids, you have the option to have Amazon automatically hide out of stock products. I like doing this just in case, you know, we're out of stock on half of our products, uh, which can happen with FBA. We just wanna make sure that, you know, customers are seeing the options that they can purchase. We also have the gallery option with our brand store. So your galleries must have at least three images, but as many as eight images. Those images must be at least 1500 pixels wide by 750 pixels tall, um, but they can be bigger. And then you can also add a headline and a description. Uh, as you can see here in this image, the nest uh, is you know using the headline, using the description. Uh, but this brand is actually just using an image and has embedded that text inside the image. So there's different ways you can look at it. There is also the best-selling products content block. This is automatically updated to reflect your best-selling products. And there's no customization for this. You just choose the option and you know the customer gets what they get automatically generated. Recommended products, another automatically generated content block for the store. This is actually unique to each visitor. So depending on their search history, depending on things they've purchased in the past, Amazon will give them a stack of products that is unique to them that they might purchase. The featured deals section allows you to add up to 500 ASINs in a text field separated by commas, and it's creating a product grid but it's only pulling the ASINs that actually have a coupon or a prime exclusive discount or a deal. Um, and it's showing those deals. So I really like to use this feature to create a tab in my brand store that shows, you know, the tab name might be Black Friday deals or feature deals or Mother's Day deals. And then I can just add all of my ASINs into this content block and it's going to pull all of the promoted products automatically. In fact, you could keep this feature live at all times and you know when mother's day comes around you can change the name to mother's day deals you know this this tab name so it's a cool way and actually amazon is promoting this feature now if you have a tab like this they will actually automatically show a banner um, on the home page of your store that calls customers to to go to that store which is pretty cool all right, guys, that's it. Those are all of our content block options when creating a brand store. As we can see here, this is a store that I personally designed. Um, you know, we're calling out our follow button. We have, you know, the shoppable image we talked about. This image is going to be the same exact image on mobile. Uh, right here, we're using a product image that's thin. We have our, you know, variable height section layout using these for category blocks. You know, here's another split section, but it's an image with a background video. 
and clearly this split section I've added images and in this one I've added products so that's just this is kind of a cool example of how the same split section design you can either choose image or product um, and so on so this split section is a big image with four small ones next to it and I've chosen images for all of these and then you know same idea here and then as as we just uh, saw a second ago this is a split section but I've chosen image and video so there's a lot you can do and once you know the options that you have it's really empowering to know kind of how you want to approach the store design so thanks so much for watching like if you got value comment if you have any questions about brand store blocks and options and sort of how to navigate designing a brand store Thanks so much for watching. If you like this content and you want to see more of it in your feed, subscribe to the channel below. And thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you soon.